Chapter 1 Finding Our B-17 When can you come and pick her up? Dr. Dick Deso, National Air and Space Museum The National Museum of the Mighty Eighth Air Force, or NMMEAF, opened its doors on May 14, 1996, in the city of Pooler, Georgia. The museum is located several miles from the birthplace of the 8th Air Force, the National Guard Armory at 1108 Bull Street in downtown Savannah. Today, a historical plaque stands outside that building, which is now the home of American Legion Post 135, describing the founding of the 8th Air Force at that location. Since the museum's opening day, it had been the wish of the museum's leadership and board of trustees to present visitors with the display of a genuine World War II heavy bomber, a B-17 or B-24, the bombers that were the backbone of the 8th in the air war against Germany from 1942 until 1945. During the first decade of the museum's operation, there were many near misses and disappointments as various opportunities to obtain a bomber were unsuccessful. Finally, on December 16, 2008, an email arrived at the museum from Dr. Dick Deso, Curator, Modern Military Aircraft at the National Air and Space Museum, NASM, addressed to the President and CEO of the Mighty Eighth Air Force Museum, Dr. Walter Brown. The email said, it is my privilege to inform you that the deaccession and transfer of the Air and Space Museum's B-17G to the Mighty Eighth Air Force Museum has been approved by the Regents. Congratulations! When can you come and pick her up? Our story begins with the receipt of that email by Walt Brown. There is, of course, a long story leading up to the arrival of the good news that the B-17 tail number 44-83814, had been gifted to the Mighty Eighth, and then another story, lasting six years, depicting the restoration of the airplane. Most of the activity leading up to the gifting of the B-17 to the Mighty Eighth occurred in 2008. There are several versions of the events. I have come to the conclusion that, while there are two separate descriptions among the museum staff and volunteers as to what occurred in Pooler, there is no one who can authenticate events that occurred in Washington, resulting in Dr. Deso's email announcing the awarding of the B-17 to the Mighty Eighth. What follows has been gleaned from first-person descriptions of two events that occurred at the National Museum of the Mighty Eighth Air Force in 2008. One, or both, could have started our story. The first account was developed from an interview of the then museum's chief of maintenance, Rick Ennis, by the city of Savannah's first project historian, Doug Reed. The following is the recollection of Doug Reed, project historian for the Mighty Eighth Air Force Museum, edited by the author. During July of 2008, an event took place that may have changed the National Museum of the Mighty Eighth Air Force in a most extraordinary way. On display in the museum's combat gallery was a German Messerschmitt 163B Comet, one of Hitler's so-called secret weapons. Records indicate that approximately 300 comets were manufactured. One of the rare survivors had been loaned to the Mighty Eighth by the Smithsonian Institution. The loan agreement expired in 2007, and the Smithsonian, needing the comet for a new exhibit, had dispatched personnel to the Mighty Eighth to retrieve the tiny aircraft. The process of crating and shipping the comet took several days and involved concerted efforts of both Smithsonian and Mighty Eighth personnel. During one of the frequent conversations among these workers, one of the Smithsonian crew made the casual comment, you need a B-17. The Smithsonian has one that I'll bet you could get with just a phone call. It's in mothballs in a hangar up in Virginia. Continuing with our story, the Mighty Eighth's enthusiastic maintenance chief, Rick Ennis, pushed for details and immediately reported the conversation to Walt Brown. 